Well, thank you everyone for being here to listen to this talk entitled Make Your App Work Perfectly. Oh, sorry, connection interrupted. So, as any of you um, in your own application or other application ever experience this uh, at some point, so basically this happens whenever we have trouble having connection, and this is what this talk is going to be about. Uh, but first, to introduce us ourselves, my name is Xavier Goucher, I'm the lead Android engineer at Workwell. My name is Jeremy Bartholomew, I'm Android engineer at Workwell. And uh, so just to give a, a, a bit of uh, uh, context, Workwell is a company that makes an application that tries to bring all the services that go around your workplace in uh, the same application. So parking, reservation, concierge, um, uh, child daycare, um, everything you can think of. So let's start. Why does this still happen? So I think everybody has already met this kind of situation. This screen is from LinkedIn. It's when you go to your favorite social application and you see that screen, you say, oh, damn, I don't know what's happened. And it's an offline issue. Du during this part, I will uh, present to you some different situations and explain uh, why we can encounter an uh, offline issue. So let's see this map. So this map uh, represents the mobile coverage network of the world. And um, I will explain very quickly. So the purple dots uh, are for the 4G, uh, uh, green dots for the 3G, and uh, white, yellow, yeah, white, yellow are for the uh, 2G, and the white space are for no coverage. So as we can see that uh, here, uh, the most developed developed countries as are covered of uh, purple dots. That means that we have a lot of a powerful, very present coverage. But uh, what about the others? What about the next billion users? That we can see that they have no or maybe low coverage. So we have to think about them because they, they need to have the same satisfaction as us when, while using their app. So this situation, I really know well this situation because I have to take the subway every morning, every night to go to, to work. And so as I'm used to use my phone during, uh, in the subway, I know by heart every uh, station coverage. And yeah, <laughs> I, like to, I like being in, in, on Instagram. And so sometimes I can comment or answer my friends when I stop at uh, Luxembourg on Area B. And it's very frustrating because you're in a deep conversation, you want to send a meme, and there's no connection. So, crap, it's, <laughs> you, it's over. Yeah. And last but not least, list, plane, and parking. So for the plane, Mm, I'm okay to not uh, have uh, offline. I don't want to use my phone because, you know, I don't want to cause a crash in the plane. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I know that my friend used to make some uh, video uh, during the plane to show that they are going to vacation. But, and um, for the parking, for the parking, I know a very good situation when we have offline issue is when, for example, I went to Beyonce concert uh, last summer. And I was with my sister, and we tried to go outside the parking and to put the address of her home. And it was like no connection. And we were like, oh, OK, so what, what are we going to do? Say, yeah, let's go out and see if there will be a connection. But when you're out, you're like praying to have a connection because you don't even know if you have to go to right or left. And last, uh, the lift. The lift. You, in, you, you go to the lift. You are on your favorite application like Facebook. And then, no connection. You have to close your phone and reconnect to the real life. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so the offline first mindset. So, uh, do not treat offline as an error condition. Offline is a default state. Online, it's just uh, icing on the gate. So, yeah. So we live in a world. And when we were born, there was no Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It was very offline. So I think we may think about uh, creating, building our app offline first uh, before thinking about online. So 
as it said, unlike is the last layer on the cake, and it's always the best part. So network loss is part of accessibility. Let's uh, see what accessibility is. So the accessibility is the quality of being able to be reached or entered, or the quality of being is easy to obtain or use. So I think we should um, treat offline as any other accessibility issues. We don't have to cover it with only a single error message. We, don't, we have to take care of it to make a better experience for the user. And yeah, offline handling impacts abundant rate. If a user encounters uh, several times the same issue, it will end by uninstall your app. And we don't want that because we make app for users. So let's see a bit about the off reference risks. So I will show you some example when we can um, show to the user that uh, the data has for example, here, fresh, fresh, and um, by indicating him uh, with only a hint that the data has been updated, and so he will know that uh, he has the most recent data on his phone. Then we can uh, indicate to the user if an action is reachable or not by changing the icon or only changing the color of a button. So. At first, uh, at first sight, it will, will, it will uh, very quickly understand that uh, is on or offline. And um, we can also um, indicate the state during the, in the app, uh, which will explain uh, what's happening. Like first, there's the unsafe state, like you did an action and the data has no, even in the local database or in the server. Then there's the saving state, where the data is being saved in the local database. Then the save state, the, lo the, uh, the local database is up to date and the data is saved. Then there's the syncing step, so they will, uh, the local database will uh, interact with the uh, server to update the data remotely. And the last stage, synced, uh, every, both uh, databases are up to date. And you will have to make uh, error message equivalent. Like, as we see at the first uh, screen, there was only say, oh, no, no connection, try again. But if you say that, the user will be very confused because he won't know what to do. So in the first screen here, we can see that there's an issue with the Wi-Fi, so he know he has to activate his Wi-Fi. On the second screen, um, there's an issue with uh, why, he, why, we try, why the app tried to processing a request. So he, won't, he will know that it's not his fault, but the app fault, and he will be able to report uh, the bug. And the last part, he will know that uh, there's only an issue between uh, uh, why processing the synchronization of the data. So let's uh, talk about the offline first architecture. So this is the basic ar architecture that we implemented at Workwell. So when we do an action on, your fo on our phone, uh, it will trigger the, the server, and the server will update the local database, and at the end, when all the data are up to date, we will display this. Um, I will add that uh, in the local database, every object has uh, a TTL, so a time to live. So with that, we will know if the data is fresh or obsolete. And uh, we created for that an object that we will talk later uh, called local results, we have, which are three states, uh, present, obsolete, and not found. So let's talk about if the data is present and fresh. So if the data is present, it's fresh, it is fresh, it is retrieved to the app, and easy, we'll display it. In the case of the data is obsolete, that means that the TTL has expired, uh, we will request the data and retrieve this to the application, but we will also do uh, a request to the server to have the most up-to-date data. The server will update the local database, and then we will retrieve the data and update the screen 
uh, for the user. And last case, if the data is not found, we will directly uh, request uh, the server about the, the data. It will update the local database and then retrieve to the user and display on the screen. So for the update, it's like it's kind of the same um, uh, workflow. So we will uh, directly uh, request uh, the data on the local on the server that will be updated that will update the local database and in the end retrieve the data. So uh, let's now dive a bit into some code. So the example we are going to show uh, has been written in Kotlin and using Rx. But of course, you can do the same thing with coroutines, or you can also do the same thing if you're still using Java. Um, so uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, any classic item object that we have in the application. As Jeremy mentioned, we have two fields uh, on top of the usual you know, name, description, email, whatever uh, fields that you can have on your items. The first one is last modified, and it uh, knows the exact timestamp at which the data has been updated locally. And it also has a time to leave. Uh, time to leave is basically how long do we consider the data fresh. And de depending on the type of data or depending on instances of data, we can um, um, change the, the, the time to leave for the data. For instance, if you have, um, um, let's say, a, uh, a user profile, we know that the users don't usually change their profile, profile every day, and so we have a 15 days uh, uh, time to leave period. If you take a look at polls, because polls are changing regularly, because we have new answers to the polls, uh, we have a time to leave of about one hour. So when we have such an item, we uh, use the, you know, the classical uh, uh, repository uh, architecture with a remote source and a local source. And actually at Workwall, we uh, divided those into a source and sync. Uh, basically just to man make sure that we uh, know which way the data is flowing. So the source is something that is read-only, and whenever we have to push something, to write something, it's inside a sync. So for the remote uh, source and sync, uh, it's basically what you might expect, uh, your basic CRUD operations. Uh, so we have get or get by ID or just get all items, and you have the create, update, and delete, and I mean, all the things you can think of. And the local source and sinks are basically uh, the same. Just one uh, difference, uh, what Jer Jeremy mentioned, is that when we get something from the lo local uh, source, uh, it will get you a local result, which is a wrapper uh, around your, your result, uh, to know how fresh it is. So this is what the local result look like. Uh, we use a sealed class, but you can uh, implement the same thing using just an interface uh, in plain Java, uh, where we have you know, only three implementation. Um, a local result could either be uh, present, uh, which means that the data is present and it's fresh, obsolete, the data is present, but it's uh, past uh, its, its expiration date, and it's not found. For instance, you, you're looking for the user with um, ID 42, and it doesn't exist yet. Um, and there is just a single method that is get that uh, returns the value or throw an exception uh, if you are in uh, the not found case. So then we have the, uh, an interface uh, that describes the repository, which we call the global source or global sync. And this, uh, again, doesn't show at all the local results because everything is handled by the repository. So on the application layer, we only know about the global source and sync. We don't know about the local or the remote. We just talk about the repository, which is the single source of truth. And the repository handles everything uh, directly for us. So what's the logic? Basically, um, so this is just an example, and we implement it on many cases. This one is on an observable, but you can do it on singles, on maybes, on other stuff. Uh, but that's the, always the same idea. Uh, where basically we created an, an extension where when you have an observable of a local result, we can actually flat map it to uh, uh, an observable of the object itself. 
and it, it takes two lambdas, one that uh, applies uh, a query on the remote source to um, uh, query uh, the data uh, remotely if needed, and one that updates uh, the local sync uh, based on the result of the remote uh, query. And what we do on this is we simply uh, do a flat map uh, with a switch on the result type. And so basically, if the result is present and fresh, we simply result, uh, return the observable with just the local data. So there is no request, no network request at all. If the value is obsolete, uh, and if the network is available, uh, then we have, uh, we call the fallback method on the, reports, uh, the remote source, we use a flat map to update the local database and return the results. And we use the start with to make sure that uh, before, I mean, in parallel of making the request, the local obsolete value is still written to the, to the, um, to the application, to the, to, to the requester, to make sure that we actually display something uh, to the user. So if the data is present and obsolete, we still have something displayed while the data is being refreshed uh, over the network. Uh, if there is no network available, uh, we simply just uh, return the local value and don't think about it anymore. In case of the not found, uh, again, we, uh, we check if the network is available. In this case, uh, it's much like the previous case, uh, except we don't have to start with because we don't have anything to start with in the first place. And if uh, we don't have the network, we simply return an empty, or we could, sh in some cases, we return an error. And then we have a few um, uh, extensions to work on a list because sometimes we get just uh, a, a, a single object, so we get a user by ID, for instance, but sometimes we get a list of objects. And so we have a few uh, simple uh, helpers to you know, help deal with it. For instance, we create um, uh, this keep present only. So we have a list of local results that transformed it into a local result of lists. Uh, and in the list, we only, get, uh, we only keep the data that is fresh. Uh, then we have the uh, not found if empty that we use on uh, a list of objects. So for instance, if we are looking into a directory of objects and the directory is empty, we assume that it's up to obsolete because we can know about the directory but not yet about its child, even if uh, the, the directory is, uh, is fresh, it's just incomplete. Um, and we have this one too that is uh, basically uh, we only keep the list uh, uh, as present if all the data is fresh inside of it. And if uh, at least one of them is obsolete, we, uh, return, no, uh, we return an obsolete. Uh, so, uh, I'll, this, we will post the slide later, and you can, you know, dive, dive back uh, into it. Uh, but basically, it's simply uh, useful things to help deal with the local results uh, in the case of lists. So, once we have these basics, uh, uh, there are a few, you know, uh, obstacles that we have to deal with. The first one being handling pagination. Because uh, when you're requesting a list of uh, users or a list of objects from the uh, server, you don't get everything. You just get the first page and the next page and the next page. And so uh, uh, because uh, when we are displaying something uh, uh, on the application, we only, um, the, the main source of truth is the local database. So we need to handle pagination uh, in a smart way. So this is the way we do it. The basic principle is that we read from the local database. And when the user scrolls and we reach the end of the screen, we actually then start processing, uh, sending a request to get the uh, missing objects. And when uh, the request ends, uh, then the data is uh, updated. And uh, in turn, because we, we are listening to the, um, to the database, the screen is refreshed. So this is basically how, how it works. Um, we are implementing the uh, scroll listener on the recycler view. Um, so this is an abstract class because we actually have implementation depending on your layout manager. So we have an implementation on the grid manager, uh, linear manager, and, and, and so on. Uh, and basically the idea is we get an unscrolled event that says that the user scrolled the recycler view. And if the last item is visible, 
the first item is not visible and the layout is not refreshing yet, then we uh, trigger the onload next page. So basically uh, what this logic means is that uh, if the last item is visible and the first item is visible, it means the, the list is too short and we already have everything we want. Uh, and uh, because the unscrolled is always uh, triggered, um, uh, we use the is refreshing state uh, to know if we should uh, or not uh, trigger a new requ request. And the load next page uh, is uh, fairly simple. The, the main um, um, part of it is the compute page to load that computes what should be the page I should ask for uh, to, the, to the server. That is, basically, I look at how much data I have in my list and uh, how much I should have and, and count how many pages I have already uh, displayed. And then, uh, if, uh, in some cases, we have some uh, subtlety to make sure that we don't request the last page over and over and over again. Some caveats about that is that uh, you need to have the same pagination logic on remote and local, local source. Because basically what we're doing is we're making a query on the local database to know what we should display. And if that query is not exactly the same as the one used by the, the server, you might miss some items or query the same item twice. Uh, it's querying the same item twice is just, yeah, you're using too much network. Uh, missing some items could be uh, a problem for the user because they think, oh, I, I know there is something here, but, but it's not there. So it's, uh, it's a problem. Another issue that you can find when uh, you have this kind of thing is that you need to handle the deleted items. If you don't uh, rely on a local data database or you don't rely too much on it, uh, basically when something is deleted and your cache is just you know, a temporary cache, uh, you find them uh, very early. But if your main source of truth is a local database and someone did something on the server, you need to know about it. So there are a few steps that you can have to, you know, uh, try to handle this. The first one is automatically deleting, deleting all the data. Uh, so when data is like, you know, uh, older than twice the time to leave, for instance, you can say we delete it, uh, which helps keeping a balance between the disk usage and the available da data. And of course, you need to uh, fine tune um, how you know, uh, how you want to delete all da data, uh, but it only deals with part of the problem. Second, uh, second way to deal with it is to deal with the actual HTTP code because, spoiler alert, they do meet something. So um, I've been in too many places, too many uh, companies where they would return a 200 and actually have an error message in them. Uh, if you see that, run. Um, so what we do is when we, f we see a 404, which means um, the, 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 the resource has not been found, or 410, which, which means it's gone, we actually delete locally the item that's related to the request. Then you can ask the server. So this means that you need to uh, talk with your backend developers uh, and make sure that you can have a request to know what items have been deleted recently. Uh, so there are many ways to do that. You can um, send a hash or a timestamp on the last valid data that you have or send a list of uh, IDs, object IDs, and say which of those are uh, deleted uh, or you can find other solutions. Uh, there's you know, plenty of ways to do this and you need to adapt to your use cases because uh, if you're dealing with thousands of objects or just two or three, uh, your, your strategies could differ. So let's uh, talk about all handling offline action. Uh, this is something that we haven't done yet uh, at Workwell, but uh, I, uh, I search on internet to know how I can deal with it. So uh, the main solution is to schedule jobs. So for that, there are several tools available. So the job scheduler uh, made by Google, which, which has been introduced uh, in Lollipop, and it is based on condition. So that means that it's guaranteed that the job will be done. Uh, 
Evernote created the Android job library, which, we, which um, helped to fill the gap made by a job scheduler, because as job schedulers is only available since Lollipop, uh, there's no, there, there, there was other solution for the, AP, the, vers, the previous version, but Android job will uh, use three different API, like job scheduler, um, GSM, uh, GSM network manager, and alarm manager, and we will, it will use automatically the best uh, job, so job scheduling solution for you. Uh, there was also a job dispatcher, but which has been duplicated for work manager. And work manager is like uh, the combination of uh, features of a job dispatcher and a job scheduler. So that means that will cover a larger range of version, API version. So let's take an example of how we could um, schedule a job. So it will be very simple with only three, three steps, which will, um, the first uh, will be to set a sync status in the local database, then lo launch a, a sync job one, uh, where, when the connection internet is back, and then update uh, the, sync, um, the sync status of the local object when it's updated with um, the server. So this is the, an example of the new uh, uh, local object with the sync status, so with two status available to be synced or synced. So let's take an example of my favorite application on my phone, which is Instagram. So I want to comment a photo. And so I have no connection. So here, the only, the single source of truth is the local database. So I will save uh, my comment in the local database with the status to be synced. Then I go off the subway and I have connection back. So I will uh, update um, uh, the, um, the data on the server from the local database. And then I will uh, send back a message to, I will send back the data to the local database to update the sync status and then display changes. So in conclusion, um, uh, as we said, you need to treat offline, uh, always, when you're developing, you need to keep the offline uh, case always in mind. Um, uh, as a reminder, the offline first mindset is that the offline shouldn't be like an edge case in your application, but should be actually uh, be the default state. Uh, and, and online features would actually be enhancements on the default state. Um, also, you need to, uh, if you want to keep that in mind, you need to measure your network usage and uh, and by that, I mean not only just knowing, okay, I'm using uh, that much uh, of the bandwidth, but actually measure how many requests you are doing are actually uh, relevant. Because sometimes you do a lot of requests and to only have uh, 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 a few uh, return on investments, uh, uh, so to speak. That is, you, you query the same data over and over again and it hasn't changed. Uh, and that's bad because you're using the battery and the, 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 the user's data plan uh, to do that. Uh, you need to test your own application with lousy network cognition. So taking the subway, uh, going inside your lift, uh, um, or uh, you know, putting your phone inside a microwave turned off. <laughs> Uh, are very good solutions to, you know, reproduce uh, very bad network conditions. The, the microwave actually are very, very good example, turned off again, because uh, they are actually Faraday cages. So if you start a, uh, an online process and then put your phone and, and close the door, uh, it will automatically uh, uh, lose all con connection, Wi-Fi, uh, mobile, 4G, whatever. Uh, and so you can uh, actually reproduce uh, a user going into a subway or uh, being on the train that goes underground or being in the lift. Uh, do also uh, use your, uh, your phone application in airplane, in airplane mode. Um, the LinkedIn uh, uh, example we, say, we, we showed uh, earlier, uh, 
it actually annoys me a lot that the app knows all of my contacts and it knows at least their names and current company. And sometimes, I mean, I'm in airplane mode, I want to know about uh, a person, I just want to be remember the name. I know the first name, but I don't remember the last name, I don't remember where they're working on. And, and it just displays this, this annoying screen that say, oh, I can't do that. I, you've looked at it like yesterday, but I can't do that. It's, it's really annoying. So do use your application in airplane mode to uh, find all the, play, all the pain points that can happen for a user. And yeah, use your own application because the more you use it, uh, the more you can see where are the frictions, uh, friction points uh, in there. If you want to go further, uh, there is an offline first Slack community. You can find it at this uh, address and a few uh, resources to uh, articles on Medium and a website dedicated to the offline first mindset. Uh, lots and lots of uh, inspiration that helped us uh, create this talk. And that's all for us. So we want to thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, please do so. One question? Huh? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we haven't included the uh, Android, uh, the Google implementation of pagination uh, yet in our application, and we are not using live data yet. Uh, we're using our own uh, architecture in background. So I'm not sure if there is something that prevents you from using them, but uh, I would say try. <laughs> uh, I, I think it should work because um, I, I'm, I'm guessing they might use the same kind of uh, of uh, uh, logic behind to know uh, when they reach the end of a of a of a list and and need to uh, query a new uh, a new page, uh, but I I can't tell you that because we haven't used these uh, these libraries uh, in our project. So yeah, the question. Yeah, so the question is, uh, uh, well, the, uh, on the slides that we only display uh, the, the the new data once it's back from the server. Actually, it's just we didn't display, we didn't show all the the arrows that that came. Uh, uh, basically, what we do is uh, when we uh, when we save it locally, uh, because the single source of truth is uh, the local database. Whenever it's modified. We do display it. It's just that because we know about the sync status and we know about the, the updated data, uh, 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 updating, updated timestamp, uh, we can display the relevant message and say, okay, it is saved locally and it's going to be synced whenever you're going to have network again. So the user knows that uh, the data is saved. And, and the most important part about this is they know that if they kill the application, uh, the data is still safe. And then we know about the, the modification they, they, they had or the action that they took. Um, and, but we, we, didn't just, we didn't display ever the, the arrows that go back to the application. So once you save the database, it's always uh, updated on screen. And once you actually get a uh, network back, so it's one hour, one day later, uh, then the, the, the modification is sent to the server, and once it's displayed, uh, uh, and once the, the, the request sending it to the server uh, succeeds, uh, there is an update in the local database that updates the, the screen. Yes? Um, so your, like your item is based on the time of statement, right? 
No. Uh, so the question is, uh, is the uh, item, the uh, information of the item based on the, the timestamp of the phone? Actually, no. So the last modified uh, uh, value here is based on the server timestamp. So basically, uh, we know that some users like to change the day manually to get more points at credit, uh, Candy Crush. So, and, I mean, they do. They do. So you can't rely on the, the local timestamp on anything uh, for anything else than uh, you know uh, measuring short delays or durations. Uh, what we do is we use um, in the in each request that we do send to the server there is the uh, uh, server uh, timestamp. I don't remember the the header in the in the response, but there is a he um, uh, header in the response with the actual timestamp of the server, and we use that to compute. Uh, the, the delay between the local uh, timestamp and the server timestamp, and so we use that to make sure that whenever we modify this information and when we compute uh, if the data is fresh or not, uh, we use the server timestamp. Yeah, well, I'm sorry we don't have any more time for a question, but we, you can come and talk to us right now if you want. Thank you very much.